What is going on, everybody? Welcome to episode 67 of Betting and Boozing here on the HHH Racing Podcast. I am your host, Kyle Roscoe, and we have a very fun sequence coming for to you guys tonight. We are covering Oakland Saturday for the Whitmore Stakes. It looks like a very interesting sequence with a lot of different ways you can go. Short field to begin, but then after that, you guys all know Oakland by now. Just absolutely massive fields with a lot of competitive horses. Going to be a fun one on tonight's show, including the return of a long-awaited return of one of our co-hosts who's been with us for the longest time. It was uh, me and Pat back in the day, but Pat is coming back, and he's going to give you his best picks for Oaklawn this Saturday coming up. But welcome in, guys. Thank you guys all for joining the show. Greatly appreciate it. As all know, NHC is this weekend. I will be flying out tomorrow morning along with Howard, Matt Miller, and Drew Coatney, Brad Anderson, and and all the rest of the guys to uh, Viva Las Vegas this uh, coming weekend. And hopefully we can cash real big in the NHC. Shout out Ralph Conti in the chat who said, have a great time in Vegas, Ralph. I appreciate that. And thanks for joining in the show. But guys, we're going to go through peripherals as always real quick. And then we'll get right into the handicapping. As you see right now, bettingatboozin at gmail.com is the best way to reach me or follow me and DM me on Twitter at AP Roscoe K. Both ways are a great way to reach me with questions, comments, concerns, anything of the above. And you also see scrolling right now. Our next show is tomorrow. That is March 14th. That's Pi Day for all you math teachers out there, i.e. the boss who's probably on a flight right now going uh, to Vegas. But that is going to cover late pick five for Santa Anita on Saturday with a lot of interesting races as well. Please tune into that. That is, again, tomorrow, Thursday, March 14th at 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. But please, also as you see right now, please go down below the video player. Please like the video and please subscribe on YouTube. If you're on watching on X, feel free to continue watching on there. But then please come to the YouTube player and leave a like on this video. It really shows us that you guys are liking the content that we're putting out. And it's the easiest and best way to support our channel. So please come to the uh, YouTube, youtube.com slash HHH Racing Podcast, and please give us a like on this video. And while you're there, comment below the video player your picks for the Whitmer Stakes. Again, it's a little bit, it's a pretty decent field. A lot of Oakland mainstays in that race. Please come below the video player and comment who you like the most in the Whitmore Stakes. We would greatly appreciate it. For those that are list, uh, prefer to listen on audio, we're also live on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Anchor. Not only every episode of Betting and Boozing, but every single episode on that gets posted to the HHH Racing Podcast YouTube channel. Although YouTube is preferred as we show a lot of visuals on this show, um, audio is available as well. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Anchor, or wherever you get your podcasts. But guys, we have um, we have a big announcement coming to you guys, so stay tuned in a little bit for that. But the Power Picks guys um, are still live and still extremely profitable continuing to build on that ROI of over two and a half years of picks still well in the green. If you guys aren't subscribed, you guys are missing out only comes out to $4 a weekend for two full tracks of price plays, spot plays, pick five grids, everything you guys need to be successful on a Saturday, $4 a weekend, which makes it one of the most profitable and one of the most affordable pick sheets in all of horse racing. Again, patreon.com slash HHH racing podcast link is also in the description, but guys, just like last year, if you guys were around uh, last year this time, this show just got off the ground. We were in episode maybe eight or something like that, and now we're in episode 67. But the Betting and Booze and March Madness pool is making a return this year. That's right, guys. I'm going to show it on the screen for you guys right now and how to get there. Um, it is this screen right now, and I have the picks up. But this is it right now. The link is in the very top of the description you can see betting and booze in 2024 it is locked so it stays within this group however the password is very easy it's capital b lowercase n capital b 2024 that's bnb 2024 with a lowercase n and capital b's the link is in the description it has the password there and everything else please sign up when you guys make your bracket please make it your first at least your first name if not your first uh name and last initial that way i know who is um whose bracket is whose you only get one bracket but if you do end up winning our bracket pool you will get a free fifty dollars and free merchandise that it could that includes a koozie and could include a hat or somewhere along the above but you will get free merch in coordinates with the free fifty dollars but 
for Power Picks subscribers, and you must subscribe to the Power Picks before next Thursday when the tournament starts. Next thir- next Wednesday, let's say next Thursday at midnight is your deadline to sign up to the Power Picks for an opportunity to win double. If you win the NCAA bracket pool for 2024 for BNB and you are sub to the Power Picks for only $4 a week, and again, for $16 a month, you will win an extra $50 for yourself so that will come out to a hundred dollars and you still get that free merch of course hundred dollars on the line for this bracket pool please go sign up it is in the top link of the description here on youtube and the password is capital b lowercase n capital b two zero two four again come on over at youtube.com slash racing podcast to come get in on that but guys i'm really i'm really excited i want to announce it now because you guys will have eight days to make your picks our, and because we will, of course, announce it next week, but you guys will have very minimal time to get your picks in, i.e. four hours by the time we go live. So please go to uh, YouTube again and su- and sign up for a chance to win free $50 and, of course, free betting and booze and HHH Racing Podcast merchandise. And the easiest way to find the Power Picks, guys, is, of course, on HHH Racing Podcast. Dot com. You can see here again, just straight into Google hhhracingpodcast.com, and you'll see right here Power Picks Tip Sheet. Click on that, it'll take you right here, and then click to subscribe. You'll go straight to Patreon, and then you can join, pick your membership, the $15.99 a month, as I talked about, and you will be alive to double of uh, $50. You will now be alive to $100 in the packet pool, and you'll get one of the best picks sheets in all of horse racing. So that's just a win win, in my opinion. Again, HHHRacingPodcast.com for that. But now, guys, with all of that, we can all take a breath and we can bring on our co-hosts to kick off this great show for Oakland Park. But again, returning from the East Coast, a familiar phase to all you longtime Ben and Boozling fans. But guys who have come in a little bit recently do not know this guy yet, but he is the longest standing member of Ben and Boozin, Patrick Kunsel, and Noah Maher, Mr. West Coast Bias himself. Now back, actually, on the West Coast. Boys, what's going on? Not the much. Glad to be back. The man is back. He himself is back. Again, a little hiatus with the job look. Work comes first, guys. We all love to be here on Ben and Boozin, but... You know, when your work schedule uh, disallows it, it is what it is. But again, we're happy to have Patrick back. And I'm sure you guys are with the picks, of course. But now I'm going to, sh- again, Ralph Conti, Katie is here. It's also St. Patrick's Day on Sunday. And that is true. I'm actually really excited to be on Vegas on St. Patrick's Day. That'll be, I feel like that'll be a really interesting thing. Sylvain is here. Thank you very, thank you very much, Sylvain, for joining the show. Greatly appreciate it. And Tanner Hawkins, what's up, my man? Thanks so much for joining the show. Greatly appreciate it but guys let's get right into it let's not make anyone wait anymore it starts the late pick five at oakland starts in race number seven it is the purple martin stakes this is there's two stakes in this late pick five sequence one a grade three that is the grade three whitmore but a lot of these races are allowance allowance made in special weight very very good races as they always are over at oakland this is the smallest field of them all it is a field of six for three-year-old fillies in the purple martin stakes with the morning line favorite, if I refresh this, I should have morning lines now. I thought I did. Maybe not. But the morning line favorite, I believe, is going to be either the number two, Blue Squall, or the number six, Extreme Diva, the Minnesota bread for Ramon Vasquez and McLean Robinson or Christian Torres and Randy Morse. Um, the Asmussen runner and the Hartman runner, Brooklyn Drew and Texas Woman for TX Woman for Arts. I think it's Texas Woman for Arts will be right behind. And I'll switch over the picks right now for the purple martin stakes guys and you'll see charlie's picks are on here even though he could not make it tonight he still wanted to give you guys his picks he is going with me with the number six extreme diva but both noah and patrick are going with someone else and patrick albeit you're basically the new guy on the block here so you got to go first number two blue squall who like i said is going to vie for that favoritism on the top end but definitely a convincing running line yeah, just tell me I have to prove myself first. You don't yeah. have to tell me. <laughs> no. Uh, listen, um, yeah, Blue Squall, you know, she linked up with uh, Extreme Diva in the stretch uh, last time in the Dixie Bell. Um, and, you know, I, I looked at it, you know, thinking maybe she didn't have an excuse, um, you know, since she got the jump on uh, Extreme Diva. Um, but I, I just was, you know, really impressed, um, you know. And sorry, Patrick, right here, the eight is the Extreme Diva on the outside. Number six, Blue Squall is the one in between horses right here. Yeah, and I think, you know, like I said in that 
like we're going to watch now. I also think that, you know, Blue Squall, um, you know, will get a better trip in this spot as well. Might not have to deal with the uh, that quickly of a pace. So, it, you know, because considering Brook- Brooklyn Drew, who draws right outside of her, um, will probably be the early pace. So it's this is a very interesting race, um, you know, with – I'm not sure who's going to be the morning line favorite. Favorite, maybe the outside horse, uh, but I, I do think uh, Blue Squall at a at a good price um, has a big shot to uh, return the favor on Extreme Diva. Yeah, and that is one thing that definitely consider. I mean, that race was very good. I, as you can see, I think it's one of the two, or um, if not for Brooklyn Drew, who I think might have a pace set up here. Who you know you're going with on top, so I'll kind of throw it over to you. I won't talk too much about Brooklyn Drew, but I'm sure that's what you kind of saw on her as well. Yeah, well, with the Dixie Bell, um, I thought you could make a case for pretty much any of those three runners that are coming back in this spot. Um, I, I decided to go. I decided to use the uh, the one and the six underneath, but I, I thought the two is very live as well. Um, I just went with Brooklyn Drew, who's the fresh face in here. Uh, she started her career on the grass. I, I thought she was pretty well meant. She, I don't. I mean, she she was supposed to run on the grass last time and got taken off. I don't know how good that field was, but the way that she did it. I thought was very impressive. Um, and the way that she's kind of worked out of that, I think she's kind of worked herself back onto the dirt. And Chris Hartman's not kind of a guy that I think, in my opinion, would kind of throw this horse in this in this type of race uh, if she wasn't ready. So I think she's got some talent, and I think she's just kind of the fresh face in here. Yeah, and look, I don't disagree with you by any means. Obviously, I think the horse is very live. I have her in second. I just think she gets a complete pace set up in this race. You can see um time form actually has her completely in front but i don't i mean is she really gonna be that far in front guys this race says favors front runners from time form but i'm gonna go to the five here real quick Esternia for randy morris and escabel i mean what is this horse gonna do i mean she's running 21 and threes guys like what is what is Esternia gonna do is she not gonna be trying to vie for the lead with brooklyn drew i think brooklyn drew might just be a little more talented and definitely and uh lightly raced so I think she, uh, her talent could be really untapped here. But what, like in that type of regard, what is Esternia going to do? Talk about working really well for Randy Morse. I mean, she's going to go to the lead, and that's why I, I lean towards the number six, Extreme Diva. Who shout out Siggy Mendoza, man, he's back. Uh, Siggy, what's up, my friend? Thanks so much for joining the show. Greatly appreciate it. He says the pride of Minnesota will win again. Obviously, Extreme Diva being the Minnesota bread that she is with uh, Midwest connections with Hugh and McLean Robertson. Mm-hmm. I love that. I love that trip last time. And I think she's going to get that same exact trip again. You know, she draws the six in the six horse field. She's going to sit right next to probably the number, you know, the number two blue squall right to her outside. And she's, I mean, if she's to the outside and that rail doesn't open up, she's going to get the jump on blue squall. And if she, if blue squall couldn't hold her off last time, if extreme diva gets the jump this time, what's, what's it going to be for blue squall. And plus, you get Ramon Vasquez, and being the Arlington guy that I am, look, I love, I like Eduardo Gallardo, but I think Ramon Vasquez is a little bit of an upgrade there. I think he'll put her in this perfect spot for Extreme Diva, and she'll win going away probably by, I don't know, let's say one and a half. So I completely agree with you, Siggy. I think the Pride of Minnesota, that's being the number six, Extreme Diva will win pretty, I not handily in this box. I still think... Even though it's a short field of six, I feel like there's a lot of horses you can make a case for in this race, but I'm going with the number six, Extreme Diva, and I think she has a very, very high shot to win this race on Saturday. But Noah, I'll let you kind of close out the show. You have the other extreme, I guess you could say, in this race. In second, and this will kind of close out our conversation here, is that's the only horse we really haven't talked about yet. The number one extreme smoke show. That last time also coming out of the Dixie Bell and was closing late um, at a little bit of a price, but the other McLean Robinson in the spot. Yeah. Like I touched on earlier that Dixie bell, I thought was a pretty good race. Um, she had a little bit of trouble. I think she had some more excuses than kind of the others in that race. Um, so she was one that I was kind of looking at, uh, in terms of a price where, you know, you're, you got a small field like this and there's a couple of, uh, lower price horses that just aren't super intriguing or you don't know about. So I think this one is kind of, on the steady improve, uh, I think she's going to sit a, a pretty nice trip kind of in the pocket and hopefully Arietta can kind of tip out and, and she can have some run uh, in the spot. Right. It's like another one of those horses that's going to be in, kind of in that forwardly place just off the speed type of uh, race, which 
Um, I don't, frankly, I don't know. I didn't know if she was good enough for, uh, or fast enough for horses like this. You can see blue squall ran the 83 last time. Um, extreme divas in that 83, 84 range, uh, extreme smoke shows just a little bit light on the numbers, but if she gets a good setup from the rail, which she might just get a nice pocket trip extreme smoke show could definitely be live in this spot. But again, a field of six, a short field of six guys, but a very, very interesting one at that in the purple Martin stakes. For three-year-old fillies, I'm going six three two. Patrick's going two three six. Noah's going three one six, and Charlie's going six five deuce. Guys, gonna switch over to race number eight here, and this is not this is not a stakes race. This is an allowance race for one hundred forty thousand dollars for fillies going um going six furlongs on the dirt. And here we go, guys. Arkansas breads, but draws a eleven in this spot, and um. Tanner Hawkins brings up uh, time form PPs. He said Extreme Diva was favored in that last race, although Blue Squall was right behind her at five to two compared to two to one. But I'm going to check the time form numbers in here if they have the morning lines, and they actually do. So that's actually really good to know. The morning line favorite in this race is the number one Hall and Ice off of a very impressive maiden win for uh, Lindsey Schultz and Nick Juarez. Second choice is going to be the number seven Appealing Addy. And the third choice will be the number four. No coincidences. Also coming off a very impressive maiden winner. But going to switch over the picks right now, guys. And we want to talk about covering all our bases here. Although Patrick and Noah are going with the exact same horse on top. That is the second choice, Appealing Addy. I'm actually going with an 8-1 to one morning line. The number six, Stenic, um, for uh, Brian Creighton and Ramon Vasquez. I'm just a Ramon... No, I'm just a West Coast lover. I'm a Ramon Vasquez lover today, I guess. I don't know what to tell you. Um, but either way, guys, no, I'll go to you first. As Patrick went first last time. The number seven appealing Addy. Definitely, I mean, you want to talk about a very good main race as well. That last race was pretty damn good. Yeah, I'm sure you saw the same way, Patrick. Uh, there's There's got to be a lot of speed in this race. I mean, on paper, uh, it seems like there's quite a few horses in this field that kind of have to have to go to the front end. Um, and, and appealing that as well. Yeah. An appealing Addy, uh, who's a seven in this field, uh, looks like she'll be about mid-pack, maybe a little more towards the back. Um, even though she's kind of surprised last time at 12 to one on the debut, she did it really well. I know the number didn't come back great. Um, but I just from I think from a setup standpoint, you know, Randy Morse, uh, he's, he's plenty capable of bringing horses off this layoff. And, and Christian Torres, especially here at Oakland, is not a bad jockey to pick up. <laughs> yeah, no. Go ahead, Pat. Um, what did you like also about appealing out of you? You also have this horse on top. Yeah, no, I was just going to add with the horse and the jockey. I mean, I saw a stat. I think it was on uh, X about Torres' numbers at the meet, and they're just uh, – they're they're unbelievable. I mean, I think he's hitting at 20% right now. Yeah. Um, uh, but, you know, Noah hit on most of it. But I also think, you know, usually when you see um, these horses break their maidens first out, usually it's – most of the time on the lead and you know they'll just you know run away with it open lengths if they're really good and you know with appealing addy she did that but she did it from off the pace um and mm -hmm. you know I, I just i think she takes another step forward in here um you know i know we're going to deal with uh speed especially from the inside with the one horse um so you know appealing addy at four to one would be very generous for me yeah and look there's just one thing i didn't like um out of that race a lot of horses have come back to run not the best numbers. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, behind her, the last race was a 42. That horse came back to run a 15. So you can argue that type of, you know, who did she beat? But you want to talk about doing it very well. She ended up winning by eight with a pretty with a hand ride pretty much the whole time. So, you know, you can only beat who's in front of you guys. So appealing Eddie definitely did it very well. But with a horse who, you know, I have a little bit of question marks with to a horse who's going to be almost double the price. I went with the number six Stenic in this spot. Charlie has in third. No, you also have this horse in third. I'm playing it for the same reason you guys are, um, is the fact that this horse is going to be a little bit towards the mid pack. There's going to be a lot of speed ahead of her in this race. And she's going to have the pace to, uh, the pace to close into here. She beat the number uh, four, I believe, in this race, or the number, set, uh, number four, yeah. No coincidences in this spot who came back to run a – very nice race granted on the lead by herself but still was able to power away from everyone else um ran a bang up race next time which makes me like obviously like stenic even more i just think 
in a race like this where there's really no standouts, guys, if there's two horses that are doing it, are doing the same type of running um, with the same type of numbers, I'm much more inclined to go double the price. Brett Crichton has won at 25%. Very lightly raced barn, but still winning at 25%, especially for a small barn, is very, very good. Gets Vasquez up. And albeit this horse has gone to the lead before, I think with the fast pace, I think it will set up exactly like this. She showed she can run into and run in behind horses. Makes me like Stenic even more. And obviously, you know, I'll get your touch on when we go through it. But um, Patrick, I'll let you kind of talk a little bit about your picks. Did you, I don't have I have number one in second off that main win last time. And then the 11, who everyone has nowhere. So kind of round out your picks and what you're thinking, starting with the number one, Hall and Ice. Yeah, with Hole and Ice, uh, I think she's just, you know, going to be, you know, catch me if you can. Suarez, uh, Nick Suarez has to go with this horse. Um, you know, impressive, uh, you know, winning uh, last out. I am just not sure with, like, the pace that we talked about. And then with the 11, um, you know, bro uh, Broker Maiden last year, uh, Connections immediately put her in the open company. Um you know, one bad performance and then a so-so performance last out. Um, I, I do look for her to bounce back in this spot, but she won on the lead when breaking her maiden, and she's probably going to have to go again. So she could be in that pace that I keep bringing up. So, uh, you know, interesting race. Yeah, it's very interesting race. And it's sorry, I didn't scroll down. I was typing in the chat, but the number 11, Miss Carroll County, I believe, is the one you have in third, uh, in third, Patrick, if you don't mind me. Is it Miss uh, Carroll County? Uh, it's the the girl in red, uh, the eleven, the eleven, the girl in red. Oh, I'm, dude. The, see the thing with the no numbers thing is it really throws you off when it you're does, trying yeah. to figure out. But this is another one, Pat. I mean, it's just that same type of trip that we've keep that we keep talking about. No, I'll go to you. Not last, kind of round out our conversation here. The number four, no coincidences. The other firster who had a very good uh, front running style in the last race breaking. Or maiden, and then anything you want to touch on with Stenic, then we'll move on. Yeah, I ended up going with no coincidences just because I think uh, out of the speed, I think the best speed is probably either the one or the four. Yeah. Uh, and just just with the with the rail draw, and the two's also got speed as well, which I think could maybe bother one a little bit. So I ended up leaning towards the four as maybe one that if the four ends up breaking, I think she could be the one that maybe kind of wires this field. And then Stenic, I'm thinking similarly to you, uh, she got the lead in the debut, uh, but she showed that she could sit off last time. Yep. Um, and and talk about another uh, jockey upgrade with Ramon Vasquez, who you who had in the in the last race and in here. Um, and Brett Brett Creighton, who I, I'm just not a guy I'm not too familiar with, um, and he's brought kind of limited stock here at Oakland, but he's been doing well with it. So yeah, uh, definitely a horse to to keep in mind at eight to one. I I always like seeing these smaller barns, and when I see these types of numbers with these smaller barns do well, it definitely lets me. It definitely keeps me on notice. So definitely one that I'm looking forward to playing on Saturday if she's the right price. Of course, I'm going six one four. Patrick's going seven one eleven. Noah's going seven four six, and Charlie's going one four six. So, guys, let's move on here. But I want to shout out a few people in the chat. Brooks Lewis. I don't think I've seen your name before, my friend. Cheers to you. Thanks so much for joining the show. Greatly appreciate it. Mark Bogax, of course, is here. Thanks so much, man, for joining the show. Thanks. And Eduardo Canlis is also here. Uh, brand new face. Thanks so much for joining the show, Eduardo. Um, best bets, as always, will come at the end of the show, probably in about 20 minutes, 25 minutes or so. But, guys, let's keep, let's keep moving along. And next is the big future race. It is the... Grade three Whitmore stakes running at six furlongs on the dirt. Of course, uh, there's no, I don't know why I keep saying it. There's no turf at Oakland. That's just the way, you know, go through the motions field of seven, but you want to talk about the Oakland mainstays and the best horses at Oakland. I'm definitely sprinting. Here you go. Field of seven morning line. Favorite is most is probably going to be the number three rivet off that last race for the Asmussen uh, son and father duo. The number two Tejano twist, of course, Everyone knows him down at Oakland, Landeros and Hartman, and probably uh, Surveillance or Jackson Traveler will bring up the third. And actually, Pratt is on this horse. Does Pratt have another? He has a always oh, riding yeah. Rocket Can. That's mm -hmm. why. Um, so he's coming over for Rocket Can, which is actually re really interesting. I'm actually just noticing that now. I guess um, either way, he is riding number six, Jackson Traveler, and I'll move on. And guys, we are seeing it pretty similar here. 
We all have the number two, except for Patrick. Patrick is going with the number three rivet, albeit we all have the number two and the number three in first and second. I feel like one way or another, we we're all seeing this as a as a pretty two horse race, whether it the speed holds or Teano Twist comes from the stratosphere as he usually does. But Pat, you are going with the speed, the number three rivet. Yeah. Um definitely facing tougher um in this spot than last out. Um, you know, I know his previous uh two wins have, you know, against Damon's Mound, uh, you know, th- three back. Uh, but I do look for this horse to have a very big four year old campaign. Um, you know, facing Teon Hano Twist two back, uh did not run very well at all. I I you know, I don't really know what to make of that race because I'm not sure what exactly happened. Um but I, I just think Rivet's going to be forwardly placed in this spot. And, um, you know, if this horse can run back to its 99 buyer speed figure, I, I don't see why this horse can't win. So, uh, listen, Teano Twist is a million dollar, is a milli maker, as I like to call him. And um, it's going to be tough for Rivet, but I think Rivet's going to be uh, ready to go. I know mean, you want to talk about a horse for Oakland, man. It's always, it's always has been Teano Twist. Last time and really has been undefeated the last. Well, no, actually, three out of the last four times, unfortunately, ran into Skelly last time, which Skelly ran a pretty damn good race for a race worth a lot more. Oh, I know. Did Skelly? I thought Skelly ran overseas. Did he not? I thought he ran in the Saudi Cup um, or the, the, on that card. Maybe maybe I'm wrong, but correct me if I'm wrong in the chat, but I thought he ran in the overseas. But either way, um, Teano Twist, man. I mean, what more can you say about him? Just an absolute... Would be an absolute monster horse to own. Six for six in the money at Oakland. And look, and if Rivet um, runs like he did when he faced down a twist before, looks to have a pretty good run um, at him this time. Yeah, the way I see it with Tejano Twist is last time, um, Skelly, Skelly just ran a hole in the wind and, and he wasn't getting to him. Um, and that was also on the slop. And, you know, he, he's been a very – talented horse but he's never won on the slop so that's kind of not his forte Mm -hmm. so if you kind of scratch that race he's got back-to-back wins um you know he's in the best form of his life and he gets speed to run into in this spot um so i think tano twist as long as he's not too far back which landeros is seems to be uh he does a pretty good job most of the time at at kind of keeping him in the race as long as he's not too far back i think tano twist is going to be very live in this spot I mean, look, he always is. He, he's always a horse that gives his run no matter what. And I agree with you with the slop angle. I think that could be it. But um, and to my point, thanks, Mo- Mark, for throwing that in the chat. He did run in Saudi. He ran in the uh, Riyadh dirt sprint and got second only to a Japanese runner in that. I can't pull up the chart, but I know he lost to a Japanese runner in that spot. So he still ran huge in a group three over in Saudi. So that flatters town a twist form, of course. Horse for course, if you want to go for that angle. Just an absolute monster to Oakland running 90 high 90s after high 90s buyer, even squeaking into the hundreds at some point. He gets speed. He's going to run into it. Uh, he's going to fly late. Even if he doesn't get speed, he's always going to give his run. So Tano Twist is going to be my top pick in this race and definitely a horse I'm going to key around playing when playing this weekend. But other than the two and three guys, I mean, there, we have three other horses underneath. Osborne, who Noah has is one that's going to be a little bit ahead of Tejano twist and kind of give his little bit of his run, getting the jump. I just don't know if he's good enough. Um, The number four surveillance is who I have and who Charlie and I have in third. These last two races give me confidence that this horse can run at six furlongs and close into, you don't really need hot paces for this horse to close into another one to get the jump on Tejano twist. Just not sure if he kind of uh, classes up to those types of speed figures. And then Patrick going with the number five. Uh, is it Ninja Warrior, Patrick? Again, I can never tell. Correct. Yeah. But either way, one to kind of challenge Rivet early. And if it does if it does go a little bit, you know, one, two around the track, Ninja Warrior is definitely going to be that uh, forwardly placed. Jackson Traveler, look, Jackson Traveler is not going to be that far back off the pace. And Cowan's not going to be far that far back off the pace. You see 112, 114 early time form, respectively. Last thing we'll show is the pace scenario here. It does show Rivet on the lead here, but the five and the seven not too far off to his flank. Tejano Twist doing what Tejano Twist does mm-hmm. all the way in the back as usual. And the horses we talked about in Osborne and Surveillance getting a little bit of the jump. But 
if this speed develops at all, guys, I'm I'm a very very interested in Tiano Twist as always. And actually, they're right with each other, nine to five, two to one. Um, I think off that last, I think off of Tano Twist's form, I think he might just get the nod in favoritism. But they're basically going to be the. I would assume they're both they're basically going to be the same odds come post time as the morning line shows. I'm going two three four. Patrick's going three two five. Noah's going two three one, and Charlie's going two three four. But guys, going to switch over here as that caps off the feature on Saturday's card. But these last two races, guys. All right. I mean, you want to talk about, I mean, doozy, we make the that's money the best in. way. Yeah, that's <laughs> where you'll get the value no matter what. Um, this race, allowance yeah. optional, 62.5, with a purse of 141000 running a mile at Oaklawn. Ten horses with the morning line favorite, as we'll check the time for and PPs for the morning line favorite. I believe it is the number 10. Number 10, heroic move at 2-1. to one. Oh no! Sorry, Rocket Can. I completely forgot that horse was in the race. Rocket Can at nine to five. Heroic move right behind a two to one, and Harlow Cap rounding out the top three at four to one. Guys, going to switch over the picks right now. And as I bring them up, um, you can see right now. Um, actually, sorry, no, I didn't put yours in yet. No one's a little late to give me uh, top three. Hold on, ten, six, eight. Right, Noah. Yeah. Okay, sorry about that. My bad, guys. So, but Pat, you're still going first, man, because that means Noah's going with my top pick in this race. The number 10 heroic move for Harry Hernandez and Robertino Diodoro. And but you are going with the Asmussen, Asmussen gang and the number six Harlow Cap, who obviously is a very nice horse. Yeah, if uh the Asmussen born has a good day on Saturday, I'll have a good day. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Uh yeah, um, this horse uh, last out uh, at a mile and an eighth, actually, um, you know, ran very well uh, with Keith Asmussen aboard. Um, you know, I, I was really impressed the way that horse, uh, you know, stalked the pace and was, they were very patient. And, you know, when they got to the top of the stretch, Keith just opened this horse up and drew away. Um, you know, I don't know if distance is going to be a problem here. I mean, you look too back. Uh, the horse went a mile. Um, I, I, I'm going to put a line through that just because the mud, the horse did not look like it wanted to take to the mud. Um, but in a spot that, you know, you get rocket can coming back off a layoff and then the 10 heroic move. I, I, I think Harlow cap is, is right there. And um, you know, at four to one in this spot could take another step forward. Um, and you know, Listen, this horse is running the Risen Star and the Arkansas Derby. So, you know, this horse is I mean, pretty well to, meant. I was say, you want to talk about a horse that was well meant last year. I mean, yeah. the Risen Star, Arkansas Derby didn't do really any running. Granted, ran into Angel of Empire, but ran, then ran into the Texas Derby, only lost by a nose to Hayes Strike, who's a decent horse. But then, first two starts of um, his four year old campaign, the last one wasn't very, the set two back wasn't very good, but that last one. Definitely fit the bill running a mile and an eighth. Granted, this comes back to the mile, which, of course, is two turns at Oaklawn. But definitely, if improving off that 89 could be good enough to win. Noah, you and I are both going at the number 10, heroic move. That last race was the one that sealed the deal for me. Did get a pretty good trip in that spot, but, man, did, did uh, he draw away pretty impressively. Yeah, I thought it was pretty impressive. Um, I'm kind of thinking similarly in this spot. Uh, Patrick was kind of thinking with the rivet. Where that last race, um, you know, it, it's his it's his buyer top or his career best buyer, um, and I thought it was a pretty wide open race. So typically, horses that have, are coming coming off of that career best, I, I kind of try to play against a little bit. Um, but just with this field being so wide open, if he runs anything close to this effort that we're seeing right here, I think he's got a legitimate shot. Yeah, and that's that's kind of my thinking as well. You talk about all the time how especially Colts Phillies can kind of bound about, uh, you know, top out, but Colts between three and four and four to five could definitely take moves forward and off a little bit of a, you know, like a two month break that uh, Diodoro gave this horse, this horse comes out and runs an absolute hole in the wind at 99 granted did it with a rail, with a rail running trip. But I mean, look, if this horse improve or even stays clear of that 99, this horse should have this field notched by a mile, at least based on numbers. Um, I just think this horse is extreme is improving now that he's turned four, uh, continues to work well, continues to run well for Diodoro. This obviously will be the kind of put up or shut up race for heroic move. 
And albeit I don't really like the two to one price, but I figured it would be something around that off that 99 last time. Um, I just think that he's going to sit a very good trip. A nice two pace stocking trip will be the um, will be the picks and shout out. Yeah, TJ, TJ, thanks so much, man. I completely forgot to put up the picks, man. Thank you very much. But Noah is also going with me on the number 10 heroic move. Patrick, as he touched on, is going with the number six Harlow cap on top well let's kind of round out this this guys um patrick i'm gonna throw it to you rocket can come haven't been seen since the kentucky derby in 2023 um hasn't been seen since but bill mott bringing this horse down to oakland in his first start after working at pace and down in florida but i mean those works will t- I, this works will probably tell you what this horse means in this race Oh, yeah. I mean, I think this horse will be ready to go, um, you know, just, you know, may, may, you know, like we say, may need one, um, you know, just might not be fully geared up for this spot. Um, you know, Billmont is very patient with his horses, as we all know. Um, but this horse, I mean, it was fantastic. I mean, the boss was <laughs> singing Rocket Man on on live shows <laughs> when this horse won uh, the Holy Boy. Bowl. Uh, so. Yeah, uh, this horse is very well, and uh, glad to see the horse back. You know, it's great for the four-year-old campaign. Uh, Should be an exciting, you know, time for this horse because who knows? They could think big things if this horse can win this race. Yeah, and there's one thing that I want to touch on. Rocket Can is going going to be favored in this race. I'm sure he is. But am I willing to trust Bill Mott? Look, Bill Mott is Bill Mott. I'm not trying to discredit him, but he's not necessarily like – off the 100 day layoff, he's extremely good. I think, I believe he's at like 17% off this really long layoff, but obviously those works should be telling on Rocket Can. But what this horse is gonna be, what, eight to five? Yeah, 17% for Bill Mott off of 180 days plus. Um, this horse is gonna have to show it to me, but obviously can win um, what's going to be a low price, but I'm willing to play against for now but yeah if he definitely shows out in this race i would um i would definitely be inclined to bet him back later but also good point right at the wire i wanted to bring that up thank you for bringing that up um he says might be a tad too sharp after that long uh that long layoff um obviously running mile and eighth mile to court his best runs a mile and 16th now runs a mile granted a two-turn mile but running that type of shorter distance for a horse that likes to go a little bit longer off of a long layoff could be recipe to play against good point right at the wire. Thanks so much for joining the show. Greatly appreciate it. Um, and, but Tanner Hawkins brings up a good pick as well. We talk about comparing. Um, we talk about comparing numbers all the time on this show now between time form and buyers and Harlow cap and heroic move earning one thirteen last time out, even though Harlow cap got a, um, what buyer was it last time? It was a hold on. I'm scrolling down to it right now. Harlow Cap got an 89, but um, the number 10 heroic move got a 99. But yet they both got the same time form number last time out. And that's definitely one thing to keep in mind when you're looking at this is, you know, you can't you what I always say, you can't take one thing as, um, you know, the end all be all. I love to compare these types of speed figures. And yeah, they both did get a 113 last time out even though one buyer is 10 points higher than the other one. So that's a pretty big discrepancy, guys. And depending on which ones you like to follow, um, and definitely Harlow Cap being double the price, that's a great point, Tanner. Thanks so much, man, for bringing that up. But round out the conversation here, guys. Again, I have the two in second. That is past property for the sole fact that this was going to be out in front with uh, a race that doesn't necessarily have a lot of front-running speed in it, um, which is why, obviously, like Heroic Move in first because i think he, uh, he's going to get a really nice setup rocket can fits that bill uh past property these buyers are not far off this 90 and this 89 not far off of everybody else if um he gets a completely good setup in this race like i think he might he might hold on for a piece charlie has the source in uh third as well this was is 12 to 1 on the morning line just thinking he can catch a little bit of a piece if he com- if he runs to the pit, uh to the spot i think he will but um, underneath guys, we're kind of feeling all the same way. Noah's got Harlow cap underneath along with rocket can. So the same type of thing that we're all thinking other than the number two Pat's property, but, and they, and 
the Tanner again flattered by time for him as well as I'll I'll pull up that speed figure real quick as he got a he actually got a 111 last time out so and a 119 three back at that claiming at Oakland so you know those numbers easily fit in a race like that if he gets out to the lead by himself like I think he might pass don't count out Pat's property at what's going to be most likely double digits I'm going 10 2 8 Pat's just going 6 10 8 Noah's going 10 6 8 and Charlie's going 8 10 two guys switching over to the last race and this main special weight guys oh my gosh i st- i sat here looking at this race for 20 25 minutes and still was all over the place and couldn't really fi- think of a winner this draws a full field of 12 with two also eligibles arkansas breads going six furlongs the morning line favorite um i believe is the um, I'll just look it up. I can't. I can't honestly, my brain is so fried from looking at so many races over for the NHC. Um, the morning my favorite is number six, running in the streets. Who a horse that is zero for nine, but has run in second five times. And we all know how we feel about those types of horses around here. Second choice is the number seven, Q's Yo Mama, and third choice will be the number eleven, Sparkly, I believe. And I'm scrolling through real quick. Yes, the number, the third choice is number 11, Sparkly. And I'll bring up the top picks right now, guys. Um, and the our top picks are right there in front of you. Patrick and I are both going with the number seven. Cues your mama with Noah going with the number three. A little bit off the beaten path here with my Julia for Randy Morse and Rafael Bejarano. Didn't run, obviously didn't run very well last time, but gets the blinkers on. Gets out of the slop, and no, I'm assuming those are two of the angles you're keying in on. Yeah, uh, I'm going to be honest. This race is very difficult. Yes, um, it's very difficult. So <laughs> I, I was a little surprised that this three horse is 15 to 1 on the morning line. Uh, it probably wouldn't surprise me if that changed. Um, but with my Julia, um, there's a couple of horses that are coming out of this race, and she was the one that was a little more well meant for Sout. I think the public kind of liked her a bit more yeah. than others. She was. Um, she was a little less than five to one, whereas Sparkly, who ran a little bit better, uh, was a little over nine to one. Um, so, um, so my Julia, you know, she obviously she didn't run very well, um, but I think uh, that was a pretty good race that both my Julia and the eleven are coming out of. Uh, that third place finisher came back and won next time out. Uh, as you touched on Kyle, it was in the slob, so maybe that's you know not really her thing. Uh, and I think with the blinkers on, I think Bejarano especially is a pretty big pickup in here. Bejarano and, and Randy Morse do very well together and hit at a pretty decent clip. So I think with the blinkers on, Bejarano is going to have her uh, quite a bit more forwardly placed than Esquivel kind of did last time. Yeah, and, you know, she was three wide. She drew the 10 out of 12 horses. She's a lot more inside now. Getting over a fast track could with the blinkers on, almost like a complete, like, you know, a brand new chance for this type of horse in this race. So I think that with the inside post and probably a little bit cleaner trip, my Julia could definitely be live, especially at 15 to one. I don't know if this horse will be it. Um, granted, it is still Randy Morris running at Oakland, but um, that is definitely one to keep in mind at double digits. If you like that type of play, Noah, the 11 sparkly. So you touched on, we'll kind of just go um, in order here. I'll let you touch on your, t- your two picks and then we'll kind of move on to Patrick as we're, cu- we're basically all over the place. So we're trying to, c- we want to cover all our bases here. Number 11, Sparkly, you touched on an 0 for 28 trainer with only two in the money. But that last race, she ran or she ran really well. And I think um, if she gets, like I said, kind of a little bit cleaner trip, does kind of suffer a little bit from the post being a little wanting to be a little bit forwardly placed. But um, an improvement with a little bit of seasoning in her, I think, could be the um, what she needs to at least place in the money. Yeah, I think you're right. Um you know, she, I thought she had a little bit of a sneaky trip uh, in the last race, and she was kind of down on the rail. I mean, she ran okay. I'm just kind of hoping that that race, that both the 3 and the 11 are count, coming out of, is a pretty live race. Um, so I had her in second. Um, yeah, she's the she drew the rail in, in the debut. Uh, the Oh, the, uh, wait. Where is, there, where is everybody? <laughs> where is there? You see, obviously, she yeah. got off like, <laughs> way late Did and rushed up. Kind of had a little bit of, like you said, sneaky trip. Still ended up running well for fourth, I think. Um, definitely one to not be taken too lightly. Sorry to cut you off there. No, I just wanted to point out that little bit of a gate, little bit gate trouble, and she kind of rectifies that. I think 
even with the trainer numbers, I still feel like she has a good chance to win the money. Would you say no? Yeah, no, I was just going to say when you give up, you know, a couple lengths in a field like that, especially when you're first time out and you kind of got to yep. rush up to kind of get back into the race, it can take some out of you. So you can kind of excuse the fact that she was a little flat in the lane. And I think she's going to be a little more live this time out. And, and then I'll just quickly touch on the one who I've gotten third. Uh, it was Queen Mallard, who uh, showed some speed last time. Um, you know, it was it was in the Hall and Ice race. Who Hall and Ice is in a in a race that we covered uh, yep. earlier in the card. Um, I just like the 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 speed that she showed. Um, she was she was pressed a little bit quite a, a quite a bit that day. She does draw the rail on the spot, but if she kind of shows that speed again. Um, no, I, I think she's one that can kind of take him the whole way. Asmussen's a little bit more of a send guy. So I think if he can kind of be aggressive from the gate and, and get her out to the lead as quick as possible, I think she's going to have a shot. But it's it's definitely wide race or <laughs> wide open race. Uh, the seven that you guys have on top and Charlie's gotten second is definitely one that can be considered in, the, in a race like this. Yeah, Patrick, I'll go to you. Obviously, we both have this horse on top. This is another one of those horses that's running earlier uh, in the car. No coincidences is the other one that had uh, between uh, Hellish Ice and No Coincidences. Both had those really nice maiden wins in this respective race. And Cues Your Mama ran really well. Yeah, she did. And, you know, like Noah hit on, you know, being forwardly placed in a spot with, you know, maidens and stuff like that because you don't know if horses are going to want to pass each other yet or, you know, to be honest, don't really know how to. Um, I think Cues Your Mama is – that type of horse where she's going to be forwardly placed. Um, you know, I, I think the trainer's done very well uh, second time out with maidens. And um, I, I just, this is a spot where, you know, I, I saw the more not seeing the morning lines and then seeing them through time form. Uh, you know, it's interesting to me because I, you know, I thought this horse would be, you know, up there, but I didn't think the horse would be what nine to two or seven to, seven two. to two. Yeah. Yeah. So it's interesting, but you know, what, what anything different with you with uh, accuse your mama? Uh, I mean, look, this, you gotta, you gotta take it. You gotta stand on business as Charlie would say, as he's not yeah. here, as he's also going with the O for nine horse who has five seconds on top. Anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> that, I had it. Come on, dude. That's gotta be said. He, he ran extremely well last time. This race stayed really, uh, really together. Um, on the front end, you could see first to first, second to third, third to fourth, the only fourth to fifth, the only fifth to sixth. I can keep going. The only horse that showed any type of run from the back was that 0 for a 9 aforementioned horse running in the streets who came flying late to get second, as uh, she loves to do. But Accuser Mama just ran a really good race, into kind of in a weird spot in that cold pace. I feel like second time out, a little bit of seasoning in her, working well. I think she can get a little bit better. I like the seven-post draw. She should be able to just sit off the lead in front and – Coming, maybe she didn't like the slop or whatever. You know, there's so many different ways you can go with these first time outers. Second time out, I feel like she could take a big step forward, and that 53 definitely is the you know one of the best in the field and could definitely take a big improvement. Second time out, and even Tanner's in the got to stand on business. He's on that type of train. We just love to give Charlie shit because he says it like eight times a show. But Tanner, thanks so much, man. This I got we got to touch on this horse real quick, Patrick. You have this horse in third. Look, she gives her run always. And, you know, whether she's Oakland, Prairie Meadows, she's always given her run. But I cannot pick a horse on top that has over nine with seven races in the money and just always, um, oh, what's the horse that, us, you know, does what Fluffy Socks likes to do? Yeah. She wants to run and run and close and run and <laughs> yes. just never gets there in front. Yeah. And that, you know, <laughs> This horse, you know, it's funny because the, the horse even had a layoff for a while, comes back second, second. It's like, you know, if you <laughs> the connections here, it's like, you know, you're picking, you're cashing checks. Which oh, is yeah. Great. I mean, they made almost um, 100K. <laughs> yeah. So uh, privately owned, to, uh, privately bred and everything. So that's great. Uh, but yeah, th this is this, you know, if you're playing a pick five, I mean, I can only. I can only imagine how thin you have to go to have a decent, you know, if you have a decent smaller budget, because this race yeah. you're going to have to spread. Yeah, I don't disagree with you by any means. Running in the streets, look, one to be respected. I could never pick on top, but I feel like if this horse wins and you don't have this horse in your horizontal ticket, you're going to be like, well, why the hell did I play this horse? This horse runs every time. And if there's any pace with these maidens in front, um, running in the streets could easily close into it also working 
very well. So one more horse right at the wire brings up the number nine, Mismo Mesa. Um, did run very, you know, was put into and this is one I gave um I gave a little bit of look at right at the wire. I'll be completely honest. I was in a state bred claimer first time out, but ran behind Delta Moon, who who came back to win at um at a claiming twenty thousand level pretty easily. It's just I feel like this is a little bit I mean, this is definitely an upgrade of a spot, but there's definitely no world beaters in in here. So if Miss Mo Mesa, who was close to a hot pace and kind of stayed on a little bit, didn't fade too much. Lindsay Schultz, we all know how good she can be. So uh right at the wire, Miss Mo Mesa is definitely one I would have on my tickets, is it's one that I gave a look. But I, I had I went other places because I I thought the six I had to throw in the money as for obvious reasons, like I've said. I thought the 11 when I got a sneaky bad trip, but Miss Mo Mesa is definitely one I would include on horizontals, but I just didn't have the room to put in my top three. And Pete says, book that horse. He wins for fun <laughs> this time. Also, Pete, it's a she, so take a drink while you're at it. Anyway, guys, let's move forward to our best bets here. Thank you guys so much for joining. We have another big audience, 120 live viewers as it shows, 78 on Twitter, 42 on YouTube. Thank you guys so much for joining. If you guys are watching on Twitter, please come over to youtube.com slash HHH Racing Podcast. And for those of you that are already here, please hit the like button. It shows us you guys are really enjoying the content. We greatly appreciate it. And for those of you that were not here already at the start of the show, Betting and Boozing, the March Madness bracket is coming back for 2024. Uh, the link is in the very top of the description. Get, get in to get your chance. And while you're making your um, bracket, Make your bracket name at least your first name and last initial, if not your full first and last name, so I know whose bracket it is. And you can get your chance to win $50 and free merch if you place first. And if you sub to the Power Picks, that link is also in the description or on HHHRacingPodcast.com. You will be alive to double if you win the bracket pool. That means $100 and free merch. Plus, it's only $16 a month, and you'll get the one of the best and most affordable uh, horse racing tip sheets in the game for only $16 a month. So that's a profit. What? That's a profit of not only of $84, but only 16 to win an extra 50. That's a pretty good, that's a pretty good three to one bet or two to one, five to two bet on horses, man. I don't know what to tell you. If you yeah. guys are thinking about it, go subscribe to the power picks now. So you guys can get in on the bracket pool and win double the money. If you come in first, but yeah, appreciate it guys. Please do hit the like button and join the bracket pool. We greatly appreciate it, but guys, let's move on to um the visco endorsement is enough for me i love it right at the wire um but let's move on to best bets here guys and patrick since again you got to prove you got to prove yourself coming back again you will go first as race number seven you're going with the number a win on the number two blue squall and race nine to pick three two three with six with seven twelve and I want to point this out, guys, because a lot of uh, the people, a lot of viewers we get come from Howard's show as well as just watching us. Um, on Howard's show, they do pick fives. For um, what we do, I feel like it's a lot more easy to approach it as just play your best bets or play your best horses that you feel the most strong about in the sequence. And obviously, like I was talking about, I love the number six Extreme Diva and I love Tejano Twist. So I want to absolutely just hammer those two. And the nice thing about approaching it like this, guys, is no matter your budget of the viewer watching, if they want to play along, whether they're you know a five dollar better, a two dollar better, even or a hundred dollar better, it doesn't matter. If you guys want to follow along, you guys can take these best bets and play them however you want. You know, you can play however much domin denomination you guys want to put into it. With a pick five, you're kind of especially with a base a base um, a base pick five of fifty cents, you're kind of locked into that hundred dollar ticket that you are given if you guys play along and then if you lose let's say first race you're already out 100 bucks when if that's not your budget you guys can play these types of best bets for uh, a little bit smaller and that's the way that i like to do it but either way guys hopefully you guys enjoyed the show greatly appreciate it patrick let's round it out best bets again race number two race number seven a win on number two blue squall as i said and a pick three starting a race number nine you're going two three that's tejano twist and rivet singling the number six in the 10th race, and that is Harlow Cap, who I know you feel really strongly about. And in race 11, you're going 7-12. And even by your standards, a little bit skinny, but I completely love the press up. Patrick, talk about your best bets. Yeah, uh, you know, 
me and Blue Squall, we're going to be dating this weekend, the two of us, against Kyle and his ex, uh, extreme I'm gonna diva. Follow, I'm going to follow oh, no. uh, Horse, yeah, you uh, Howard Kravitz restraining order on your ass if you're going to go on dates with horses. But either way, <laughs> continue, man. Uh, yeah, so I like Blue Squall in the spot. Hopefully we get a good price with her. Um, and then with the pick uh, three, which will start in race uh, nine, which is the uh, Whitmore. Um, you know, I don't usually like to do this where, you know, I have two favorites um, with uh, Teano Twist and uh, Rivet, who both could be, you know, prices of pretty much of the same. And then uh, I'll go into race 10 with uh, Arlo Cop. And, you know, that horse is going to be, I'm hoping, five, six to one. Um, yep. And then in race 11, uh, you know, the seven and the 12. Uh, listen, <laughs> if I if I was doing an ABC ticket, I, I would tell you th- those are my two ways and then just do all for B's because, uh, you know, I yeah. it's t- it's tough. Um, but, you know, this is a fun this is a fun sequence. I'm happy to be back on and I'm happy we got to talk Oakland because, you know, usually there's your full fields and fun races. So it was good. Yeah, it was. A, and like I said, the races at Oakland are always competitive. There's always a lot of horses that are right near each other. So the fact that, you know, and we talk about this, Pat, where you could play, you know, if one's favored in the pick three, rather than um, you can play like two, six with a bunch of horses and three, you know, three, six with a bunch of horses, alternating denominations, excuse me for like, you know, we call it dutching, right? Where you dutch it to get the same dollar amount. Obviously you can't exactly dutch it because you don't know the payouts of the pick threes, but you can use the doubles in a way. But um, you have a four to one single in there, at least on the morning line. So either way, even if you're if you have the two favorites in there in the first leg, you're going to get value if Harlow Cap does come in. So Patrick, good luck with your best bets. Noah, going to you next. You have two win bets to give out. So again, this is what we're talking about. Patrick had one win bet and a pick three. Noah has two win bets for you guys. He pulled a uh, damn Charlie to do it but um, giving a win bet outside the sequence we covered, which, of course, look, that's what we're doing, right, is we're giving you our best bets of the entire day at Oakland. Noah just went a little bit overboard in the fact that he handicapped the whole card rather than the last five, which I fully respect. Race number five, a race we did not cover, a win on number two, American Rocket, and in race number seven, a win on number three, Brooklyn Drew. Noah, talk about your best bets. Yeah, sorry if there's a uh, – somebody started to vacuum in the background. Uh, so yeah. coming home – Fantastic. Coming home for, coming home for spring break uh, definitely comes with its costs. Um, <laughs> but nonetheless, nonetheless, uh, with race five, obviously it's a, a race that we didn't cover, but American Rockhead is a, is a horse uh, for the Bill Mott Barn uh, who ran in the spinaway in the Frisette, uh late of uh, 2022. Uh, and she was off for a while and she came back and, and ran in a six for a long race at Gulfstream. And that was her first race in over uh, a year, uh, about almost a year and a half. Uh, and she, I thought she did it well. Um, she was a two to one favorite. She shot a pretty, she's had a pretty decent trip. Um, but she was in hand kind of the last 16th. And, uh, I think she's more of a one turn horse. Um, and, uh, Flavian Pratt, he's on, uh, he's on two mounts, uh, in mm-hmm. the sequence that we covered. And he's only on one other mount, and this is the horse that he's on. So I think that is a big tell. Um, Flavian Pratt ha- hopping on American Rocket in this spot. I think she's very live. Uh, definitely one to consider, especially if you're playing the early pick five on uh, on Saturday at Oaklawn. Um, and then fast forward to race seven. Uh, that was the first leg of the sequence, the Purple Martin. Uh, there's three horses in that race coming out of the Dixie Bell, but I ended up going with the Fresh Face, who was Brooklyn Drew on top. I was in between either doing Brooklyn Drew or Tejano Twist, but I think uh, Brooklyn Brooklyn Drew is going to be a bit more of a better price, um, and I think I think she's got uh, definitely uh, an advantage uh, up on the front end as as we kind of saw in time for him. Um, so if she can kind of get the lead in there, I think she's plenty good enough so she can kind of take him the whole way uh, at a decent price uh, at a six horse field as well. Uh, I think she's going to be very live in that spot. So those are my two best bets. Yeah, and we talked about before the show about Brooklyn Drew having that kind of pace scenario. And if she's any good enough, she can improve off that um, off that main win. She definitely has a legit shot to win that race. I told you guys at the start uh, while I was going through the sequence, my two best, my two horses that I feel the mo- the strongest about on the entire card: number six, Extreme Diva, and number two, Tiano Twist. So how are we going to extract value out of that? In race number seven, I could go a double with Extreme Diva. The problem is the race 
I might uh, now looking, obviously I didn't look at race five yet, but uh, American Rocket could be that type of horse to go with um, in uh, with a horse in, or yeah, in the, actually now there's the fifth race, but either way, pick three, something along those lines. The two races around race seven, I didn't like. So I ended up actually going straight with a win on number six, Extreme Diva. I'm hoping I can get five, like two to one, five to two. I think that's a good price for a horse like her. And value is all relative, guys. You know, people like to say, you know, if you're not getting five to one, six to one, what's the point in betting the horse? Well, if I think the horse should be eight to five in this spot and the horse goes off at five to two, that's almost double the value on a horse than I thought I was going to get. It works, you know, it, that's that's what is so good about setting a value line for yourself. The way I do it is I set what I think the horse should be. If the horse goes below or at, I usually don't play it. If the horse goes above, I will play it, and it's done me pretty well in the past. Um, I'm going with the win on the number six, Extreme Diva. And in race number nine, guys, I'm singling to Hano Twist. And I talked about in race number 10 how it's a little bit um, – I love the number 10 heroic move. I understand she got a perfect trip last time, or he got a perfect trip last time, but did it so well at the start of the four-year-old year. Looked to get another really clean setup this time. I went ice cold double in race number nine, two with 10, albeit even though they're going to be two of the, you know, the favorites in their respective races. I'm hope you know, you play that, you play that double, you might get six to one, seven to one on horses who are going to both be two to one. And that's, you know, almost double the, the the normal parlay that you would get just betting them on their own. So I'm going to go a double 210 and starting in race number nine with Teano Twist and in race number seven, a win on the number six, Extreme Diva. But guys, that is going to wrap up episode number 67 of Betting and Boozing. And I completely agree with you, TJ. TJ pops it, says in the chat, safe trips to them all. Absolutely. As we always say on here, hopefully everything going safe at the NHC. Hopefully all goes well. Viva Las Vegas. Let's have a big weekend. And if there's one weekend to have a big weekend, this is going to be it. Thank you guys all in the chat who have said, you know, salute to us um, and safe travels. Tanner Hawkins just said it. Thanks a lot, Tanner. Greatly appreciate it. And we're so happy to have the man himself back, Patrick Kunstel, as we continue to handicap races on the way to the Kentucky Derby card. If you guys are out in Vegas this weekend for the NHC, please, please, please come up. Let's have a conversation. We'd love to talk to you guys. Uh, racing down one says see you tomorrow absolutely david we'll see you at our table at the nhc but for everyone else yeah if you're out in vegas please let's have uh, i would love to talk horses there's nothing more in my, <laughs> obviously is doing this there's nothing more in my life that i love than talking horses but we'll see you guys out there in vegas if not we will see you guys next wednesday or maybe tomorrow for a special uh surprise visit onto uh picks and ponies covering santa anita but if you guys are still here, please come over to YouTube. Please like the video. Um, we're only at 15 likes. Please, please, please like the video and show your support. It's the easiest way and best way to support our channel. So please do that. But for my co-host, Patrick Kunsel and Noah Maher, this has been your host, Kyle Roscoe, in episode 67 of Betting and Boozing here on the HHH Racing Podcast, covering the Oakland late pick five, including the grade three with more stakes. And until next time, everybody, crush those bets, win those photos, and stay safe, everybody. We'll see you in the next one. Have a great night.